Hi guys, Sean here from DigiDirect. So today we're going to be talking about the Samyang Zine lineup of professional cinema lenses. I have one beside me here, that's the 85mm. They also have a 50mm and a 24mm. All three have a T-stop of 1.5, so a very wide aperture. They're meant for full frame and you can get them in a variety of mounts. So in this video we're going to touch on why you might be interested in lenses like this, why, what makes them different than still photo lenses, why they're designed for a professional cinema environment, and we're going to talk about their image quality as well. So if you don't know Samyang, uh, they are a Korean lens manufacturer. Uh, they make a wide range of manual focus lenses. Now depending on where you are in the world, uh, you may know them as Rokinon. Some parts of the world they go by Rokinon, some parts it's Samyang. Same company, same lens lineup. So why might you be interested in a lineup of lenses like this as opposed to your more traditional still photo lenses? Well, uh, there's a number of factors and we'll start by looking at the physical characteristics of the lens and you'll see why these are really meant for a professional production environment. I'm going to keep coming back to that point throughout the video. Okay, so the first thing that we notice about the lenses is that, physically speaking, they're much larger than uh, your traditional still lenses. Uh, they've got a full metal housing, so they're very sturdy. Um, but one nice thing is that, compared to the size of the lenses and the fact that they're made out of metal, they're actually not that heavy. They're actually surprisingly light. Um, so that's good. That makes them easier to work with while they're still very sturdily built. The next thing you'll notice when looking at the lens is this large focus ring here. And that's one of the nicest features of these lenses. The focus ring is very easy to use, very large, feels excellent, has a really nice resistance to it. Not too much, but not too little. Just the right amount of resistance you would use, you'd want to use when doing a lot of manual focus work. Uh, the other nice thing is that it has an extremely long throw on it. What that means is that's the distance that you have to turn the focus ring in order to get from your closest focusing point to your most distant focusing point, basically focusing on infinity. Why is that something that we care about? Well, that means that you can be very precise with your focusing. In contrast, a stills lenses tend to have very short uh, focus throws, which means they're faster for autofocus and so on, but you can be less precise with them when you're actually doing focusing for uh, manual focusing for video. So the other nice thing there is you can see on the side of the lens, right on the, the uh, focus ring here, you've got these very detailed distance markings. So that's gonna tell you as each marking is on the little line up here, what distance the, the focus point is from the front of the lens. And again, let's talk about why that's important. Well, let's take a look at these shots here. You can see in all of these shots, I'm able to consistently and repeatably get focus on the subject's face. And that's important, again, in a cinema environment, in a professional environment, because a lot of the times you're doing multiple takes of the same shot, you have to make sure that you can be reliable in getting your focus. And that's where these distance markings come in. So in order to get those reliable uh, focus points, I'm, not, I'm actually not looking at the back of the camera, at the, at the screen. You know, if you come from a stills environment, you're probably used to looking at the back, at the back of the camera, uh, using focus peaking perhaps even to, to get your focus. Um, in those shots there, what I was doing is I actually set the, the camera up first. I had the subject stand on their mark. And I took my time to specifically get the focus very precisely on their face. Uh, I think in the case of those shots, it was uh, 1.5 meters. Then when I was actually doing the focus pull, I didn't even look at the back of the, of the camera. I just looked at the distance markings here because I knew when I turned it to 1.5, that was gonna be perfectly in focus on the subject's face. And that's actually how you focus in professional environments. In movies and, and other cinema environments, you're not looking at your monitor and trying to judge focus based on that. That's not actually super accurate. You're using these distance markings. Uh, a lot of times you actually have a separate um, person on set whose job specifically is just to pull focus. They are called the focus pullers um, or first assistant camera operator. Um, but they would be standing on the side of the lens and they would be actually pulling focus, but they're gonna be doing it purely based on these distance markings, not by looking at any kind of screen. Um, now, you don't actually have to have a focus puller to, to, to do this. All these sample shots that I used for this video, I didn't have a focus puller and it was fine, um, but it does give you that option if you're in that environment and you have that budget for your project, which is great. Uh, you can also see that the distance markings are actually on both sides of the lens. So if you do have a focus puller, uh, you can uh, use them on either side of the lens. It doesn't matter they'll still be able to get the same information that they need. Next up, we've got the, uh, the aperture ring. So that's this little ring right here. You can see it goes from T1.5 
to T22. Um, and that's a declicked ring, so it's a smooth transition ring. Both the focus ring and the aperture ring are geared. And what that means is that just basically allows you to attach a follow focus to those points a lot easier. Um, so follow focus, if you're not familiar, is just a small uh, tool you probably would have as part of your rig on a cinema production set uh, that lets you more efficiently and effectively um, adjust focus. Uh, I will note though that you don't need to use a follow focus. The gears don't actually get in the way if you're just gonna be turning it by hand. So that's not a problem if you're not in a scenario where you have a follow focus. So the last thing that we'll notice about the physicality of the lenses is that they're all the exact same size. They all have a front diameter of 114 millimeters. Uh, the focus and aperture gears are in the same position and dimension wise, they're exactly the same. So again, why is that beneficial? Why do we care about that? Why do we want that? Well, uh, in a professional production environment, you're probably not just gonna have the lens sitting on the camera right on the tripod and that's it. Probably you've got it as part of a larger rig. You probably have rails, uh, an external monitor, follow focus, um, perhaps a matte box on the front. Now, if the lenses are all the same size, if you need to switch out lenses, you don't need to reconfigure that rig at all. You don't need to move the positioning of your follow focus. You don't need to adjust the diameter of your matte box. It means that it's very easy to quickly swap out lenses so you can be efficient in a professional production environment. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the image quality of these lenses, which I'm sure you've all been waiting for. First thing I'll mention is, as I said at the beginning, all three lenses have a T-stop of 1.5, so a very wide aperture. Now you may be saying, you know, I'm familiar with F-stop, what are you talking about T-stop? What does that mean? I won't get too technical, but basically F-stop is actually a theoretical measurement of the uh, light transmission of a lens, whereas a T-stop is actually a practical measurement or an empirical measurement of the light transmission of a lens. So very similar concept. F-stop comes from a theoretical place, T-stop comes from a practical, empirical place. Um, most cinema lenses uses t use T-stops instead of F-stops, but you get the idea. Uh, either way, T-stop of 1.5 is very wide, which means two things. It means A, you have a, a lot of light that you can let in, so you can shoot in darker environments, which is great. And it also means that you can have a very shallow depth of field if you want it, which is also excellent. Image quality wise, all three lenses are very sharp, even when they're fully wide open. Also important is that they're very consistent. So when swapping out lenses from the 85 and the 50 and the 24, you get the same look. The only thing that changes is the focal length, but the color consistency is the same. The sharpness is the same. Um, obviously they all have the same aperture, so you don't need to worry too much about you know, different light settings and so on. So you're gonna get a very consistent look between all of these lenses, which again is important in a professional production environment. The 85 mm is really, really nice for good close-ups and a really beautiful, very shallow depth of field. It looks excellent. Uh, the 50 mm is a very useful lens because it's a very versatile focal length. You can use it for a lot of different applications and you've still got that nice shallow depth of field. The 24 mm looks great for the wide shots. Again, at 1.5, you're not gonna have as much uh, shallow depth of field as the longer lenses, but it still has enough to separate the subject from the background. So there you have it, those are the Samyang Zine lenses. You've got excellent and consistent image quality across the range. Very, very good low light performance and beautiful shallow depth of field. You've got a physical design that is very well suited for a fast paced professional production environment. And they're also very well priced. Uh, they're very inexpensive compared to other professional cinema primes that you'll find on the market. So they're a very good entry point for someone looking to get in to the professional cinema market. If you want to find out more if the same magazine lenses are right for you and your project, come into one of our stores and chat to some of our sales staff. We've got stores in the Sydney CBD, Bondi Junction, Miranda, Brisbane CBD, and Melbourne CBD. You can also get the lenses on our website at www.digidirect.com.au. Take care.